You've got your lecture coming up then, mm -hmm. uh, very shortly now, uh, and in it you're, you're going to talk about the possibility of uh, a total ban on animal testing. Mm -hmm. Now that's not easy to bring about. What, what, you see it as a long-term project, I take it? It's a very long-term project. At the moment, it's a legal requirement for pharmaceutical companies to test all of their new medicines on animals. So for, for it to come into effect, you would have to change the law. Um, I'd like to think that animal testing could be optional rather than compulsory uh, as a first step towards achieving that goal of completely replacing animal testing. And do you think you have support from the government? I think so, because um, the EU wants the law to change, um, to phase out animal testing. And so because, because the EU is in support of it, we can then incorporate that into UK law, um, which is a process we're going through at the moment. So definitely, in the long term, the plan is to replace animal testing. Uh, and, and in the short term, it, are there any of the uh, larger... Uh, companies that manufacture uh, cosmetics in particular, um, are there any showing signs of wanting to stop animal testing? Definitely. Uh, the uh, cosmetic industry um, is sort of one step ahead of the pharmaceutical industry in that the law um, should be changing next year um, to completely remove animal testing um, from any cosmetics because at the moment people think it's illegal to test cosmetics but it's not. It's just cosmetic products that can't be tested. So cosmetic ingredients are still tested all the time um, and hopefully next year we will be in a position where we can completely replace animal testing on all cosmetic ingredients as well. And, and in the pharmaceutical industry, are, are there any uh, of the major companies there that are showing an interest? Mm -hmm. um, there's, lots, there's lots of different projects going on. Um, for example, AstraZeneca is very much in support of a computer um, simulation uh, software package um, which has been incorporated um, into, into the development process. Um, other pharmaceutical companies have their own systems that they've developed as well. Um, so they're very much in favour of it, but like I said, because it is compulsory to still do the animal testing, um, it's, it's going to be very difficult to remove it. And your work itself, mm -hmm. um, how, how is your work um, involved with animal testing? How, you, you talk about mimicking, mm -hmm. uh, replicating, mm -hmm. if you like. My work is based on um, the chemistry of um, looking at a group of compounds which make really good mimics of biological systems. Um, so rather than using a biological cell, we can use a chemical mimic. Um, and then what we do is we incorporate drugs into those mimics and we can predict how they would behave into a biological system as well. Um, so it works quite nicely as a, as, a, as a mimic system. So it is possible then? It is possible and, and we've proven that you can compare the data that you get from our chemical mimics with, with that that's um, gained through using the more traditional um, techniques that they use in the pharmaceutical industry. Not only that, but it's superior and it gives you a better prediction um, than some of the other techniques that they use. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.